let us now see how decentralized democracy in the nagar palika compares with decentralized democracy in the panchayats democracy in village panchayats have two distinctive characteristics first the individual voter has a close personal relationship and ready access to the elected representative because on an average each panch represents between 100 to 500 voters second each panch has a voice which counts a for a great deal in the panchayat it is the co combination of these two factors the personal contact between the voters and the elected representatives and the importance of the elected representative in the elected body which is the first essential step towards eliminating the power broker from the polity in contrast to the three level of panchayati raj we have so far only had single tier municipal administration this works fairly satisfactorily in smaller towns because the ward wards are small and the municipal council compact however as the town grows larger the distance between the voter and his representative increases the number of members of the municipality also tends to increase by the time towns grow into cities and cities into metropolises metropolises the medium size of the ward expands to 30000 and more extended in the case of one delhi ward even to 2 lakhs and above the membership of the corporation also expands to nearly 150 members to bring democracy in urban settlements closer to the people in the mohallas and the neighborhoods where they live the nagar palika bill processes two changes these changes are by no means a radical new departure they build upon existing informal arrangements and administrative structure in on urban settlements with a population of a lakh or more we propose the constitution by direct election of wards committees to whom the municipality will devolve local powers and local responsibilities and such finances as are required to carry out their assigned tasks we leave it to state legislature to determine the territorial area and size of population which will be served by a ward committee we would hope that jurisdiction of a committee would be sufficiently compact to give citizens a sense of personal involvement in the affairs of their neighborhood and ready access to the elected representative to deal with their ward level problems the ward councilor will be a member of the wards committee and will constitute the link between the ward and the mun municipality in cities with a population above 3 lakhs we propose that the chairpersons of the wards committee be constituted into a zonal committee the determination of the territorial area and size of population falling within a zonal committee is left to the state legislatures to decide powers responsibilities and finances will devolve to the zonal committee from the municipal corporation a great advantage of the introduction of a two tier system of municipal administration in the larger municipal councils and of a three tier system of municipal administration in municipal corporation is that it will leave councillors and corporators free to deal with city level issues with matters of policy such as city wide infrastructure overall economic and social development linkages with neighboring municipalities and economic interaction with the district as a whole hitherto the absence of effective representative local self government has introduced a glaring distortions in our system if a drain in a mohalla gets blocked the ward councilor the president of the municipality the mla the mp and the local minister are all together approached to get the drain unblocked sometimes the unblocking of the drain even requires the intervention of the prime minister the removal of such distortions requires a system change so that each level focuses on its level of responsibility the establishment of wards committees will give the people of the mohalla the locality or neighborhood a sense of personal involvement in their civic affairs it will afford a opportunity for public spirited citizens to serve their locality it will help focus attention on how the people themselves view their problems and the solutions they suggest
It will help mobilize local participation and local resources for local development. It will give voluntary organizations a neighborhood forum in which uh, to share ideas and explore the scope for citizen action. The city will then truly belong to the people. The importance of this, the poorer parts of the city cannot be overemphasized. Today, the unrecognized and unwanted are left uncared for. They huddled, huddle together in growing slums. They are unorganized because they are unauthorized. They wait to dread to the of the moment when they will be uprooted. Uprooted, they settle themselves elsewhere to be settled somewhere they must. That they are unauthorized does not mean they do not exist. They do and for their protection they turn to the slum bully who terrorizes them into submission but in exchange offers a measure of protection. The children of the unwanted are then thrown into the underworld. The wards committee offer these unfortunates a new hope of a new dawn. The Mahalla can begin looking after its own. Sir, the election commission had estimated that if the voting age is reduced, an additional number of 47 million will become entitled to vote. They will have to be enumerated on the basis of a door-to-door -door survey. The election commission will take necessary steps in this regard once both houses of parliament approve the bill. With your permission, I shall now deal with the provisions of the representation of the people bill. Over the years, there has been an increasing tendency to vitiate the electoral process. Malpractices and lawlessness have been on the increase. We had therefore to think in terms of effective measures to check such evil tendencies. The election commission is the constitutional authority and is vested with plenary powers in the matter of superintendence, direction and control on all matters prior to and the actual conduct of elections of parliament and legislative assemblies of the states. It is to be strengthened to take all necessary measures for ensuring free and fair elections. As the members are aware, the election commission is dependent on the machinery of the state governments concerned both in respect of the work of preparation, revision and correction of electoral rolls and the work in respect of the actual conduct of elections. Such staff functions under the superintendence, direction and control of the election commission in so far as the work relating to elections is concerned. They do this work in addition to their normal functions under the state governments. Thus, the state government employees are subject to dual control, one by the state government concerned in respect of the regular work and another by the election commission in respect of the election work. It is therefore felt necessary that the disciplinary control over the state government staff in respect of work relating to elections should be vested in the election commission. An amendment therefore has been proposed that such staff would be deemed to be on deputation on the, to the election commission so that they are brought under its disciplinary authority. The exercise of jurisdic jurisdiction by the state governments over their staff in relation to their normal work even during the period of elections would continue to rest with the state governments. India is a parliamentary democracy based on party system. A large number of political parties are also functioning. The democratic election process is to be sustained by the political parties. At present, there is no st statutory definition of a political party. It is proposed to rectify this defect by incorporating a statutory definition in the Representation of the People Act 1951. Section 8 of the Act already deals with disqualification on the ground of conviction for certain offences. In order to control the nexus between persons with criminal record and election activity and to include more offences in this section, suitable provisions have been incorporated in the Bill. In this connection, I may mention that we have included conviction for certain economic and social offences also in the purview of a disqualification. Offences under the recently enacted Religious Institution Act 1988 have also been included as disqualification. Modernized tools based on latest technology are increasingly being resorted to as aids to decision making. The proposal for the introduction of an electronic voting machine side by side with the existing ballot paper system should be viewed in this light. There are other advantages claimed for the electronic voting machine. It is cost reducing, easy to operate and can act as an indirect check on 
rigging ballot paper rejections etc since the representation of a people act makes a specific mention of the ballot paper system of voting the supreme court has held in an election case some time ago